This is Unwind Your Mind Back to God, written by David Hofmeister and read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue with the transfer of training with Book 3. In Chapter 3, this is Section 1, Part 4, Time, Space and Personhood, Part 4 of 6. Friend, there is nothing in the world, there is no cause in the world that is producing an effect in the world. It is all generated from my mind. That is where cause and effect are simultaneous. It is all in my mind. The effect goes along with the thought of a cause. Because... Ideas leave not their source. If the idea is in my mind, that is what is generating it. That is where it is coming from. Then the effect is there as well. There is nothing in the world. It is not as if the thought produces something in the world, the cause and then the effect. Friend, how is knowing that helpful? Is it even a valid valid question to ask if you experience differently? Because if I do, then I'm assuming that you are a person. David, you do not have to assume that I am a person. Just think of it as a symbol speaking to you. Friend, Whoever I am speaking to now, do you experience it differently? I want to know. David, you want the experience. You ask how this is helpful. If the goal is peace of mind, then this is not, then if the goal is peace of mind, then this is the most practical thing. The recognition that cause and effect are not apart is imminently practical in the sense that it is the state of peace and restfulness and that is the state of joy. The whole purpose of time is to see that there is no linear time. It can seem like a mind bender. Whoa! But look at the statement we just read. Do not project this fear to time, for time is not the enemy that you perceive. Time is as neutral as the body is, except in terms of what you see it for. Text chapter 26, section 8, para 3. What is the purpose that I have for time? What am I using it for? Nothing is a waste of time. No perceptual image, no event or circumstance is a waste of time. If you use it to get in touch with what you believe and how you perceive the world, anything can be used for your healing and for seeing that cause and effect are not apart. You can use any experience for getting back, back, back in the mind and moving into the experience of not knowing what anything is for and not thinking you know how things happen in the world of not thinking that if you do A then B will happen it takes a lot of effort and strain to hold on to that kind of a conception of the world so how is this practical The state of mind that comes from the recognition that cause and effect are not apart is one of joy, peace, happiness and rest. That is the experience you want. We go into these metaphysics as a way to bring the mind to an experience. It is not to get into philosophical metaphysics so you can pontificate and prove how deep you can go or how fancy the words can sound. 
No. This is imminently practical because it is about coming to the awareness of peace of mind. Another way of looking at it is, if you really come to the awareness that the script is written and there is no cause and effect in the world, then that awareness takes the entire struggle out of life. What would you be striving for? What would you be striving to attain in the future? When you really come to see that cause and effect are not separate, what a joy! Friend, that is what all striving is for. Future results. David, future results, future outcomes. I have been saying over and over that I have this feeling and this experience that everything is complete now. Non-profit status or no, or no non-profit status. Teaching learning sessions or no teaching learning sessions. Coming together with people or no coming together with people. It is all the same from this perspective, from this state of mind. Nothing that has to evolve or unfold. Those metaphors will still be helpful at times, but I want you to look at going beyond the metaphors. I want you to leap into the experience. That is what you really want. You want the experience. You do not want the words. You want to go beyond the words. And what is my purpose for time? Do not project this fear to time, for time is not the enemy that you perceive. Time is as neutral as the body is, except in terms of what you see it for. If you would keep a little space between you and your brother still, you then would want a little time in which forgiveness is withheld a little while. And this but makes the interval between the time in which forgiveness is withheld from you and given seem dangerous, with terror justified. Yet space between you and your brother is apparently only in the present, now, and cannot be perceived in future time. No more can it be overlooked except within the present. Future loss is not your fear, but present joining is your dread. Text chapter 26, section 8, paras 3 and 4. Friend, future loss is not your fear. It doesn't seem that way. David, to the mind believing in linear time, future loss seems significant. But really, it is present joining that the ego dreads. It is afraid of this present joining business. You know all the chatter people do at the beginning of gatherings? The discomfort and anxiety about joining, avoiding eye contact. That is another great symbol of the mind's dread of present joining. Like on the streets of New York City, where there seem to be so many people, but no eye contact. A contrast can be found in a book about the Aborigines called Mutant Message Down Under by Marlo Megan. Marlo Morgan. They were asked how it is that they can communicate telepathically, mind to mind, without words. Their answer was, they hold no secrets. That is a symbol of becoming totally transparent, of not dreading the joining at all. You are transparent if you have no sense of a private self, mask or pretense that you have to hold up. You just totally reveal your right-mindedness. You have no belief in private minds with private thoughts. You do not have anything to hide from anybody. In that state, telepathy or the connection of minds 
seems to come in and one-mindedness can be experienced. The willingness to communicate attracts communication to it. Text chapter 15 section 7 para 14 At a deep level of the mind a choice has been made to be in communication with the father. These holy encounters these teaching learning sessions are symbolic expressions of the willingness to communicate. Of the willingness which attracts communication. It is still at the metaphorical level of persons, but it is a helpful symbol. You think, hmm, I seem to be in contact with other people who are really committed to waking up. Of course, willingness to communicate attracts communication. This is a symbol of your own mind coming to that awareness. Personhood is very deeply rooted. It is easy to say the words, I am mind, I am not body. But as we go into this, you will see that you do not perceive you yourself as purely mind. Every concept held has to be looked at and questioned because that is what is keeping you from the awareness or experience of yourself as mind. Friend, it is my beliefs that hold up what I think I am. That is why it is not just a matter of sitting around reading and talking. It is really about looking at and questioning those beliefs because they are what seems to be holding up this person. David The most beneficial form of practice is completely unstructured. It is not dependent on a time, a place or a body posture. It is not dependent on repeating something so many times a day. The most beneficial form of practice in salvation is to sink into the mind. To sink into your mind. To sink down and let go of everything you think you know. That is what you come to as you progress towards the end of the workbook. But the majority of the workbook, especially in the beginning, is highly structured. That is for a reason. The repetition of ideas and thinking of them frequently is important. The mind that is not highly trained cannot remember its purpose. It spins off into all kinds of specifics. It cannot remember its purpose because it is tied into thinking in terms of goals into thinking that there are so many things that need to get done. As we continue along in the mind training, the specifics and the tracing back will become less a part of the teacher learning sessions. There will be more and more times of just sinking into the silence and not bringing up all these scenarios because the mind will be open and ready for the stillness. It will be attracted to the stillness. But present joining is your dread. Who can feel desolation except now? A future cause as yet has no effects. And therefore, must it be that if you fear, there is a present cause. And it is this that needs correction, not a future state. Text chapter 26, section 8, para 4. We end part 4 of section 1 of chapter 3 of book 3 today here. We will continue with part 5 of 6 of this section in tomorrow's episode.